Okay, so the first question is a convex lens A of focal length 20 cm and a concave lens B of focal length 5 cm are kept along the same axis with a distance small d between them. If a parallel beam of light falling on A leaves B as a parallel beam, then the distance d in centimeter will be. So in this particular question, the first thing that we will draw is the convex lens as given and then we would have an incident rays which are coming parallel to it. So let us say that this is the principal axis that we have. This is the convex lens. So as we know, when the parallel rays are incident on a convex lens, what would happen? These will get converged to its focus. And what is the focus given in the question? It is 20 centimeter. So can I say this length has to be 20 centimeter. Now tell me, we also have a concave lens upon refraction. These rays should be parallel, right? So where should I place the concave lens so that the rays would become parallel? So when can I say if this is the point, if this is the point and I must place the concave lens such that such that the this the intersection point is the focus of this particular concave lens, which is lens B and the focal length of this is given as five centimeter. So if this point is the focus of this concave lens, these rays would be parallel, right or wrong? Yes or no? And if that is so, so this distance is 5 cm, this is 20 cm and what will be this distance? This would be 20 minus of 5 and this value of D would come out to be 20 minus of 5 equal to how much? 15 cm. Hence, the final answer for this particular question would become 15, that is option 1. Thank you. Okay, so the next question is, the equivalent capacitance of the combination shown in the figure is. Now we have three capacitors being shown to us. We need to calculate the value of equivalent capacitance. So what we will do? We would say that these are the points. Let us name them. This is A and this is B. We need to find out the equivalent capacitance across A and B. Now once we look at these capacitors, let us, let us call this as 1, this as 2 and this as 3. So the third capacitance is having zero potential difference. Why is it so? Because both the terminals are connected to the same point. Therefore, the capacitance, the, the calculation of equivalent capacitance would not be affected or would not be contributed by the third capacitor. Hence, can we draw the circuit like this? So I have removed the third capacitor. So now I have only two capacitors, capacitor one and capacitor two. This is having capacitance C and this is having capacitance C. These capacitors are connected in parallel and hence equivalent combination will be written as yes, C equivalent would be equal to C plus C which is equal to 2C and hence the correct answer for this particular question becomes option one. I hope you have understood this. Thank you. Okay, so the next question is find the value of the angle of emergence from the prism. Okay refractive index of the glass b root 3 so we are given with the value of refractive index of the glass which is given as how much it is given as root 3 it is given as root 3 correct now we know in this particular case when the incident ray is entering the prism angle of incidence is zero and therefore angle of refraction must also be zero therefore let me just draw this separately over here The ray is coming like this, making an angle of incidence zero. The ray would be coming in this direction. And can I say, since this angle is given as 60 degree, I can say this angle would be 30 degree. This is 90. Therefore, this would be 60 and this would be 30 degree. I hope each and every one of you have understood this. Now, tell me one thing. What will be the critical angle for this? Sine critical would be equal to 1 by root 3 sine critical would be equal to 1 by root 3 yes or no and this would come around 0.577 right now when I talk about this value 30 degree can I say sine of 30 degree is what is 0 
is 0.5 so can i say this would not tir would not occur over here and therefore i can write down root 3 into uh, what into sine of 30 degree is equal to 1 into sine of emergent and this would give me what this would give me root 3 by 2 is equal to sine of emergent implies e is equal to 60 degree now in the question they have asked us what would be the value of angle of emergence for this the answer becomes 60 therefore the correct answer for this particular question becomes option 4 i hope you have understood this thank you hello let's see the next question a lens of large focal length and large aperture is best suited as an objective of an astronomical telescope since okay so we are talking about telescope in telescope what happens in telescope in telescope we have objective lens and eyepiece and in this case objective lens is much much larger when i compared compare it to eyepiece right so what does the option first say a large aperture contributes to the quality and visibility of the image okay so lens of focal length and large aperture is best suited as the objective why first point it helps in uh, making a good quality image of whatever object we are viewing correct a large area of the objective ensures better light gathering power of course if the aperture area is large more light will be gathering from the object that means whatever light is coming from the object we can capture more of more light to view that particular object in the form of image hence this is correct this is correct third point a large aperture provides a better resolution now of course if the gathering of light is more of course we would be able to resolve two very closely spaced objects hence this option is also correct therefore the final answer for this particular question becomes option four and i hope you have understood this thank you okay so the question says that the electron concentration in an n type semiconductor is the same as hole concentration in a p type semiconductor okay so we have doped these two con uh, conductors semiconductors such that their concentration remains same okay an external field is applied across each of them compare the currents in them okay now we, what 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 is being asked to us an external field is being applied so can i say in this particular case suppose this is my p type semiconductor and this is my n type semiconductor now in p type semiconductor i have holes majority holes of course you would have electrons also but majority are holes and in n type semiconductor you would have majority electrons okay now both of these are placed in the external electric field okay so if external electric field is being applied across both of them what would happen the electrons would experience some force in both of these but in this case we have less electrons and in this case we have more electrons so in which of the in, in which of the these two cases more current would be generated more current would be generated where the electrons are free that means in the case of n type therefore can i say current in p type is greater no current in n type yes no current will flow in p type and current will flow only in n type no this is wrong because there are electrons which are free and hence due to electric field those will get uh, will get movement from one place to another current in n type p time is same false hence the correct answer for this particular case is option number two i hope you have understood this thank you